Cody is back. G'day, I'm Andrew Wilkie. No, I'm not standing in front of Parliament. I'm sitting here <laughs> talking about footy. And my name is James Clements. I am the host here at AFL Today, your new favourite one-stop shop for the greatest game on planet Earth, AFL Footy. That's right. And I'm joined by local dinguses, a.k.a. <laughs> AFL experts, massive footy nuffs. Leo, the social guy over there. What's going on, Leo? Not too much, Jim. How are you? Do you have a haircut? I did. Thanks for uh, noticing about not four notice days that. late. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, at least he noticed. At least he noticed. You sound like old, mate. <laughs> Tough scenes. Uh, we've also got the stats boy here. What's going on, Liam McGallion? Uh, I'm just glad that uh, <laughs> the way you said that was a bit weird, but I'm just glad uh, Andrew Wilkie's not here. That could have been a very different podcast. So I'm glad that you're here and you're hosting. I don't know. I could be an independent, couldn't I? <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, sure. If you just want. Put me in charge. It'd be <laughs> fine. Of course, this is AFL Today. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow AFL Today across all of the socials and all the good stuff wherever you get your podcasts. Because the cool thing is we get five days of footy this weekend. Yes. Oh, Can we get seven like uh, the good old days? Like praise be, <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> praise be to zombie Jesus for five days of footy. This is great. I love that. I'm going to stuff myself full of chalky eggs yes. and hot cross buns. And What's your go-to egg, Jim? Crunchy egg? That's my, that's my go-to. I'm a big uh, white chocolate <laughs> kind oh, of dude. Okay. Just give me a Dream? white chocolate. Dream? Give me a white chocolate egg and I'm laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Nice. Sorry, I got a bit sidetracked there. I love, I love it. A beers, the beers classes. <laughs> yeah, right. I spend most of it just down to the beach, just drinking beers. But anyway. Yeah, that's all right. Right, AFL today. It is the teams. The teams have just dropped. But before that, of course, there's still news floating around. We did a big show yesterday for AFL today, talking about drugs. Get some drugs. <laughs> uh, but of course, the drug saga rolls on to the point where today we had. Basically, more news sort of breaking about how this is kind of looked at from insiders in the AFL circles as commonplace to the point where they're like, yeah, it's probably at least five players per team have sort of copped this yeah. treatment. I think at least, yeah. At least is where we're landing. That's crazy, so, though. Uh, insiders were saying, basically throwing out numbers like 100 players across the AFL. Mm. Where they're, how do they know that? It's basically, it's it feels like very much uh, happy guesstimations right? yeah. of yeah. who is doing a P test and if there's anything awry going, right, now quickly lie about an injury. And, like, we have sort of seen this broken down with the simple idea of, like, well, it's just bad because we're just out here lying and that's just mm. not great. It's not good, yeah, yeah. The integrity of the game, etc. Of course, we don't want people, like, being put in the way of harm by going into a game with any sort of illicit substances in their system. Uh, but, yeah, we're getting, I don't know, very sketchy sort of, I don't know, just signals being sent from the a AFL Players Association, from the AFL themselves going, it's all part of the policy to protect players. It's like, I don't know if that's protecting players, letting them get away with well, it. Well, like yeah, we discussed but, yesterday, it's just going around in circles a bit. All the articles coming out are just like trying to lay out all the rules and things like that. But doesn't really look like it's going to help that much. But anyway, they'll, yeah, like, they'll change it, I think, yeah. I do like the AFL. It's like, oh, well, it's the policy is this. Like, yeah, it's the policy that you came up with. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Uh, but then you have stuff like Clayton Oliver getting scans on his busted finger and everybody <laughs> going quickly to Twitter. Leo and I Leo and I were having a bit of a laugh. Yeah, a few uh, raised eyebrows at that one. Yeah, there was. It's like, oh, that's two weeks. Jeez, that piss test must have been pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tell you. No. Let's do some game previews because I don't think, look, there's, the, all the other news going into this weekend is literally about probably team stuff and yep. players coming in and out. Uh, we have Brisbane Collingwood kicking off in about an hour from when we're taping this because literally teams have just dropped. Uh, the outs for this one, pretty interesting. Like Jared Lyons, Gardner. Stiff, I reckon. Yeah. Steel side bottom as well for the Man managed, Yeah, managed. managed. I don't know about that one. Just another big night out in Williamstown or wherever, <laughs> wherever it was that Steel got busted. Uh, good times there, but you have Lockie Neal coming back for the Lions, which is awesome. All the Bears, as Stats Boys Nana calls them. Yes, they are the Bears. Bring Fantastic. back the Bears. Uh, Hoskin Elliott and Johnny Noble back in as well for the Pies. Pretty interesting gear. It's going to be a fascinating setup, I think, tonight. You've got the grand finalists, both over. Uh, I think we all ended up tipping the Lions on yesterday's show. We did, yeah. yeah. Are you the same, Leo? Yeah, I think Lions at home is hard to ignore here. Yeah. yeah, I think whoever was playing at home for this one, I'd tip. Even, But they're obviously... Haven't won a game, either of them. There's exactly. a battle of the losers, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Tough scenes. <laughs> also hilarious. <laughs> yeah. uh, right, but we have, so that's Thursday night footy. That gets us to Friday Arvo footy. <laughs> Friday Arvo footy for the Super Clash. Yes. I love a good Super Clash. North Melbourne Kangaroos, that is Stats Boys team. Come on. Up against my beloved Carlton Blues and men's team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at the Marvel Stadium. Okay, okay. <laughs> At Marvel, uh, this is obviously for the Good Friday appeal, the yes. Super Clash. It's fantastic. We talked about this on yesterday's show. Uh, awesome work that they do with the Royal Melbourne Children's Hospital. 
and obviously all the kids getting, you know, the visits from the footy players yeah, and stuff great, during yeah. the week. It's fantastic. And the way that they sort of raise funds for that is awesome. So uh, interesting setup, though, in terms of games. We've seen Carlton win their first two, looking all right here and there, eking over the line in hilarious they fashion. A, they know they finally know how to win a close one. But as I said on last week's show, I feel like they just go, oh, who are we playing this week? We're going to go to that level. No matter if they're playing the top team or the bottom team, that's why I reckon this could still be pretty close because Carlton go, yeah, we'll just match your level. Yeah, the good thing is that's not frustrating at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I definitely don't want to ever just slam my head up against a wall watching yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but take us through a couple of these stats here, stats, man. Uh, yeah, North, we're actually pretty solid. I went to the game last year, matched or won three quarters against Carlton, and then Carlton, I think it was eight or nine goals in that third quarter. Pretty much a replay of North Melbourne versus Fremantle, which I was also at on the weekend, where North last really, weekend. So look, last so weekend, last yeah. year's game was very similar to what we saw from North last week. Last week, so yes. So doesn't bode great. No, it doesn't bode great that we haven't changed much. We were leading a halftime in that game last week, and in that game against Carlton last year. So you you go, all right, North going into halftime, pretty confident, and then just yeah, go away in the third quarter. So decent. I think this would be decently close just because of that. That like North can stay in it for two or three quarters, but they can never play a full game. So that's why I reckon that line is a little bit too high. Carlton have won the last two meetings and North, even though it's their home ground, have lost the last 10 matches at Marvel Stadium. So that's, I've been to all those matches as well. So that's just a bit depressing. I wouldn't on my throw side. that one around. No, much. no. Yeah, I, feel like I, I didn't want to put that one in there, but I'm just putting the stats out there. It definitely just sounds like it's your fault. So. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's like the opposite of goodwill hunting. It is all your fault. It is your it fault. Is, yeah. uh, the line is six goals, 35 and a half. Yep. It's, it seems fair. I think Carlton should win this one. My tip is the Blues by probably four goals though. Yeah. Because Carlton does just trip over itself time and time and time again. Uh, Charlie should probably have a big game. I think uh, we saw the North, North defense get just sort of sliced and diced by Frio last week. So. Not enough big guys at North at the moment, uh, and especially Toby Pink has only played two games in his career. Coming up against Harry and Charlie. Uh, oh, our but the ins for this one as well are pretty big for Carlton because they yes. welcome back Wiedering, which mm. is huge, uh, especially up against like the likes of Suva and just trying to get that sort of chop off yep. off the halfback. Well, coming out of halfback. Uh, Caleb Marchbank as well. It's like that's solid as well. It's yeah. a pretty handy sort of upgrade mm. from Lewis Young and Brody Kemp, who were admitted. And David Cunningham, who did, I think, a hammy at training. So Elijah Hollins actually comes in, which is Yeah, debuts for the Blues. Yeah, interesting. Nice. Yeah, first, yeah. first game uh next to his buddy Ollie. Yeah. His brother even. Uh so who are we tipping? I've obviously gone Carlton twenty four stats guy. Uh oh, I'm pretty similar. Carlton by twenty three. I think I'm gonna say North are gonna win a half time again. I'm gonna have my heart broken and then the second half you guys are gonna clean us up. Leo? I think Carlton by seven. I think oh. I'll eke out another one. I like what stats Don't guys do it to me, Carlton. Have you, uh, actually, have you booked in with a heart doctor this week? <laughs> <laughs> I might borrow old mate's uh, Fitbit. And just we should post it. that on Twitter, Jim's updates of his uh, heart, according to you. If they're only going to win by seven, oh. uh, my heart rate as well might be up, actually, as well. I would hate every second of that. Fremantle Adelaide. Another this Friday game, yeah. Out west, Friday night footy. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be sitting there with a bucket of KFC, a couple of tins, and away we go. Lovely. Uh, up to stadium, uh, no changes for Frio, which is pretty interesting. Pretty good. I mean, they have looked awesome, so good on them. Oh, yeah. uh, for the Crows, out goes Sam Berry and Jordan Butt. <laughs> and uh, in come Lockie Scholl and James Belace. Belace? Belassi. Uh, Belassi. I, I swear yeah. they just omitted these two last week, and now yeah, they're coming weird. back in. They did, actually. Mm. They did. that. Lockie Scholl, I think, should be in the team every week. He, I really like him, but uh, they've given, like, he's in and out of the side so much, it's ridiculous. It shows that they can't really trust them, I feel. I don't Maybe. Know, in, a, in and yeah. out of the side, I don't know. I think it's to do with defensive pressure, but in terms of players, I don't, I don't know about Balassi, but yeah, I don't mind Scholl. The line is 10.5 for Frio at home as the favourite. Yep. Which, considering what we've seen from Adelaide, feels right, especially away from Adelaide Oval. Uh, Frio... <laughs> I think it's like, again, I don't want to, you know, bash this over the head, but we're going to learn a lot from this game about both teams. Well, we are, though. <laughs> because we really are. We Adelaide are, yeah. just have looked at times good, bad, in between, weird. And then you've got Frio who have looked really good. Mm. And you're like, okay, so is this for real or not? What do we what do we reckon, Stats Boy? Give us some stats. Uh, all right. Uh, Adelaide have lost eight of their last nine away matches. So we were going on the other week. Oh. I was talking up Adelaide being a really good team at home, and then they lose to Geelong, which really annoyed my uh, tipping. And then Frio have won three of the last four meetings. So the stats are leaning towards Frio. Uh, Crows as well haven't played against Frio in Perth since 2018. So I had a look. Yeah, the, the last, I think it's four or five meetings, have all been at that Adelaide Oval, which is a bit weird, a bit lucky to, for uh, Adelaide. 
Yeah, uh, far, right? very, very lucky actually. And then, yeah, I think for you, I was really tossing and turning with this tip because I said Adelaide are going to be top four this year, but they just don't know how to win. Alex yeah. said that during the week. They get close to a team and then they let them kick away. So, also, Alex yeah. says a lot of things. Like yeah, that. that was the only thing I've agreed with him in a while, to be honest. Are you that gonna they can't uh, concede on that top four pick yet. Not yet. No, no it's still. I still think they can make top four after what they've dished up. Oh, top five maybe, but yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't think. Yeah, they're not obviously a top four team at the moment, but they. I don't will, think they're a top. They will come team home at the moment. They will come home with a with a wet sail. Yeah, zero yeah. <laughs> two after losing Friday night last week. Play another Friday night game this time out in WA. It just feels pretty wonky, and I think Frio are flying. Mm. They're just feeling pretty good, like just everything's sort of clicking a little bit. Sarong's absolutely shredding. Brayshaw looks great. And uh, Yeah, I've squeezed Sarong into my super coach. So have you tried to do that, Leo? Uh, I can't get him. Oh, you can't get him? But just on this game, it's going to be interesting to see how both teams start because Frio have started both games really yeah, yeah. and Adelaide against the Suns didn't kick into, into gear until like five minutes ago in the whole game so <laughs> yeah. this is going to be whoever starts this game might actually lose it yep. I think what nil like, or half time <laughs> like if one team's leading at the yeah. start I reckon they might lose it because these teams love to come back okay. so you kick a goal no you kick a goal <laughs> no you <laughs> kick a goal I love it I'm taking Frio 22 Freo 16. Uh, yeah, Freo by 12. I can't be relative in Freo because that's going to be yeah, a close one, but... Definitely something's going to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Essendon St Kilda on Saturday. Easter Saturday. This is an absolute burn burner too. St Kilda are flying. The Dons uh, talk about like a weird game against Sydney last week. Peter Wright obviously gets solid. rubbed out. Yeah. So they lose Peter Wright in terms of the lineups, obviously. Uh, they do bring in Mason the Red Man, Redman, Darcy Parrish and Jake Kelly. Uh Interesting sort of mix up, I guess, for the way that Essendon now have to go. All right, we don't have two meter Peter. Parish and Redmond are massive. Parrish, that's pretty they're, good. They're, so they're two take, of their better players, yeah. Even uh, Kelly's are up. 150th game for Jake Kelly, too. Uh, the Saints bring in Dan Butler, oh, which is pretty good. Danger. Danger, danger, danger. Yeah. Like that. Anthony Cam Caminiti and uh, Angus Hasty. So with Mason Wood going out, Liam Henry going out, Max King obviously. Oh, there's some out. They're three of their big top outs. Like big outs for players. the Saints, big ins for the Dons. Yeah. It's a tricky one. So can you trust this in Kilda defense is my question here. The Saints are actually yeah. eight and a half point favorites at Marvel. I don't know. How do we feel about the Dons at Marvel? Uh, they're pretty – I haven't looked at their, their record there. I probably should have a look at that. But I, I, you said about their defense. I really like Saints defense. you got Wilkie. you got Josh Battle who's turned himself into a solid player. Zane Cordy down there is is one of the worst players in the AFL. But uh, yeah, other, than, other than him, their back line's looking really good. Yeah. Could it be? That was probably a bit harsh. No, no, actually, I completely <laughs> agree with that. Uh, Cole starts going. So St Kilda have gone one and one to open the season. Essendon have gone one and one. Yes. And it's not, I don't, like, I, the easy one would be to go, oh, we're going to learn a few things about both these teams. <laughs> we're just going to say course. that about every game. All season we're going to keep learning. <laughs> I can't never, wait to learn. Never stop learning is what it's all about. Isn't that like, oh, this 80-year-old has a great tip about living. Never stop learning. It's like, oh, do <laughs> Yeah, thanks. What do you reckon? Oh, I'm, just, I'm stopping learning now. It's like, you look on the internet, you're always learning. <laughs> no, we never never stop learning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously. Oh. Anyway, uh, the Dons, look, I am very, very tempted to take the Dons, and I think I'm going to. Give me Essendon Jeez. at uh, Marvel. I think they just eke this one out under two goals. I think they just hold on. I kind Essendon, of really? like the look of them in that. I thought they had too many dudes. They do have too many dudes, <laughs> yeah. but I think St Kilda have a lot of dudes that we're just like, eh. you know, <laughs> this no, is uh, the tricky part. I, 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 I think the Saints have a really good lineup, uh, but the last three Essendon's last three matches at uh, Marvel, the one, the thing I didn't read out before, they've been decided by fifteen points or less. So I, I think Ooh, this is still going to be pretty close. close. I, so I, I'm going against my what I wrote there. I'm going to go by fourteen. I'm going to go by the Saints because I I think they're a better team. They obviously beat Collingwood at the G. They're winning it away from their home ground, I think, that they couldn't do a couple of years ago. So I gotta go. I gotta go with the Saints. Yeah. I think Saints by a goal. I think this will be very close. Ooh. We mentioned that the ins for Essen are quite big, like very, very good ins. But I look at this forward line, there's not a lot of size down there. And I think if St. Kilda can put on enough pressure at the source, get those dumb kicks inside 50. Blokes like Callum Wilkie, Josh Battle will just pick them off all day. Yep. And yep. I think that'll be the difference. Yeah, it does sort of it, – it sucks taking anyone against St Kilda because, like, you feel like an idiot almost instantly. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, right, yeah. the clamps. <laughs> yes. They're just going to use these clamps that they use every day every of your day. freaking life, you freaking <laughs> moron, and here we are. Uh, but anyway, I'm look, I just feel like the Dons at Marvel, 
like I can almost see this playing out in my brain. Yeah. Like Kyle Langford kicks five and away we go. I don't and think they're yeah. a bad tip because I think this is going to be really close. Yeah, awesome game close. though. That's going to be fantastic on, what's that, Saturday afternoon at 4.20? Yes, at prime time. Lovely. Nice one. <laughs> Port versus Melbourne out there at the Adelaide Oval on Easter Saturday evening. The Don, uh, the Demons, obviously losing Stephen May to a busted bunch of ribs in yes, here. Yes, yes. And a vertebrae. Was it? Great. Oh, jeez. I think it was like a... Yeah, something going on with the vertebrae as well. Oh. Never cool. No uh, so he goes out for Taj Woden, a.k.a. the uh, Woden the Lesser. Yes. Uh, Jed McEntee <laughs> so in for Dylan, William, Dylan Williams for uh, Port. Port, cruising, looking good, looking great, and a massive uh, smashing last week, right? So, oh, was oh, that no, it was pretty close against Richmond, wasn't it? Wasn't it mean, three goals? Three goals. Goal time. Yeah, it was three they, goals. It said the G and they cruise. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, they, they were in front by about 15 to 20 the whole way through, yeah. so I'll give you that. Uh Interesting setup though with the demons, just because it's really hard to pick like what they're going to do week on week on week. What do you reckon, stats guy? Uh, I, I did write in here that there's some stats that back up the demons in this one. They've won 11 of their last 13 matches as the underdog, so that that's really good, really, really good record, which surprises me. Yeah, that's I think really they must have had some because they would have been favourites in a lot of matches as well. So that really surprised me. And then they've won three of the last four meetings with Port, but Port did win that one last year at the Adelaide Oval, the nail biter by four points. So. I'm still leaning towards Port at home. Just, I think they've got, yeah, I, I think their depth is is grown in the offseason, as we've talked about. If this is at the MCJ, I'd be tipping Melbourne every day of the week, but at Adelaide Oval, I've got to tip Port. Yeah. I think without Stephen May, and without defense Stephen just May, really yeah. cops it, and I think Port win this one by Marshall, 15. Marshall, Dixon, and few I think the just guys. the sheer size and like the amount of dudes mm. in that Port panel. <laughs> Maybe too many dudes. <laughs> no, they, I, I think, think they have the right amount. Just of, enough dudes. So. Just enough dudes. Just enough you got, dudes. It's an awesome, oh, like, dudes. if they don't have Oliver, yeah, when we don't know about that yet, obviously. Like, Has he been we'll named? He's been named. He's been named. Though, so they're yeah. going to so give him every chance. To every fight. chance up until the uh, end of it. So you've got Clary and Trark up against Rosie and Butters. That'd be so fun to watch. Right. Yeah. So yeah. hook this one to my veins, but I think Port get it done. Leo? Yeah, I think Port will get it done too at home without Stephen May. It's obviously a big loss. Jake Lever playing though after getting injured. So yeah. that's a oh, yeah, surprising that's right. one. I thought he was going to be out as well. Yeah. So it's not all bad down back for the Ds, but... Who yeah. have they got down there now? Tom McDonald in sort of Stephen May role. He's been playing the past few yeah, weeks. Yeah, he's, he's been okay. Yeah. Uh, Blake Howes has uh, surprised me yeah, as well. Yeah, he's been really Judd good. Judd McVie. So they've got some players there, but yeah. can they stand up against sort of this port forward line and um, the danger players that they have down there? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. Good setup. Mm. Fascinating Saturday night footy game. Uh, we've got a pub booking early that day. I'm like, Ooh. that's great. I can we watch do? the... Uh, What's that? Hey, what I think do? he does, yeah. Uh, yeah. I do. Oh, no, we, yeah. we weren't invited. You guys weren't invited. <laughs> I was, so. but I declined, yeah. Sorry, not sorry. Because <laughs> uh, you got the, yeah, the Demons-Saints game. It's like, cool, watch a bit of that at the pub, get home, on the couch, power Demons, let's go. Nice, Love that. nice. Sunday, wake up, smash a bunch of chalky. Hot cross buns. That's all I'll be having. Hashtag spoiler alert, hide some for the squids. <laughs> Hide some for dad. It's <laughs> a classic. <laughs> but we have the dogs taking on West Coast at Marvel at 1 p.m. on Easter Sunday. Uh, West Coast aren't good. Don't know about this. The line <laughs> really? is 49 and a half. Oh, actually, to go back to the poor, poor one, 13 and a half is a pretty sturdy line, I think, for the power. Yeah. Considering how close they've played. But anyway, uh, this one's 49 and a half in favor of the dogs. Ooh, it seems high. West Coast, not great. Harley Reid was awesome last week, but the West Coast on the road. I don't know how we feel about this one. What do you reckon, Leo? I reckon dogs will smash them. Yep. I, uh, I don't think West Coast are any chance in this. Dogs will come out and just absolutely annihilate them. They won't let what happened last year. I was going to say, who we beat them last year? That. Come on, yeah, man. Yeah, they just did saying. beat them last year. Yeah, nah. No, nah, yeah, I don't think it's going <laughs> to happen. Not going to happen again. I think the yeah. dogs, they've just got too much talent. I think, you know, you look at English, he'll dominate. Bont will dominate. Like, uh, uh, Harley Reid is probably one of the bigger bodies in that midfield. Yeah, or Gimby, but they're not going to be able to keep up with Bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's going to be a real struggle for the for the Eagles. Yep. So the ins and outs for the teams for this one, uh, Caulfield goes out with his injury. Ed Richards goes out as well. Jack McRae. McRae is back after He's his back. Uh, a million touches in the VFL, 47. But is he back though? Oh, Bevo is definitely be. going to just toy with my emotions when it comes to Supercoach draft. Put him as the sub. Uh, <laughs> sub him on. Uh, they've also got Rory Lobb coming back too which is an interesting one. They should smash the mm. Eagles, obviously. Eagles get Gaff, Harvey Johnston, Jack Williams back, Taylor Duray, Riley Garcia, James O'Donnell as well for the dogs with those extended benches. Mm. It's a, uh, I don't know, look, in terms of the Eagles, it feels very much how much by, but if there was some team that was going to completely, completely just pee down their legs, it would be the dogs. 
they did it last year. Exactly. When everything was riding on well, the line. F- the final spot, and they completely cooked they, it. Now there's the no Eagles. pressure. So That's it. Yeah, there's no pressure on them right now, so they'll Downhill probably skiers, smash them. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Tinglish, I think, is one of those interesting ones for your uh, super coach as well. He's yeah. on, actually on my super coach draft team. So oh, is he? That's oh, fun. That's good. Uh, but because we've seen what we've seen the super coach uh, scores for Eagles, Ruck, contested the opposition Ruckman for the yeah. Eagles. Yeah. Absolutely dominates. Dominates, yeah, because yeah, I don't really have any – Start. They got Bally Williams, Williams who, who's actually okay, but he's just, I don't think he's even tall enough to compete with a lot of the yeah. other Ruckman. So, yeah, he's a bit undersized and, yeah, he doesn't go around the ground as well as some of the better Ruckman. And English is the best at that because he averages 20 touches as a Ruckman. One of the greatest backmen in the uh, AFL as well. Yeah, it was kick, kick it out. <laughs> that was against out. the Hawks, actually. Yeah, yeah. That uh, won us the game. So. Yeah, yeah, it did. <laughs> I'm going to take the Dogs by five goals, so 32 points. I think I'm going to get to this. I think it's a bit of a scrappy one. And they sort of fall over themselves. You like uh, saying West Coast will stay in it for a Are you a West Coast fan? <laughs> Sneaky West Coast fan. <laughs> uh, so let's go. Uh, I'm going to go Dogs by 45, which isn't, which is uh, Eagles, that means Eagles cover the line in my uh, bet here. I, I don't think they have the, the firepower to sort of yeah, go on and win that by like 60 yeah. or 70. And uh, West Coast as well. They've sort of stayed in games for the first half in a, in a couple of their other games this year. They haven't been as bad as people thought they were going to be. Jamara so, could go off in this one. It's like, it feels Jamara like this can, is a game that yeah. either like Waitman, Jamara, or Norton kick six. Yeah, one of them will. Yeah, if you one of them, I'd will. say yeah. Waitman already kicks his last one, so I wouldn't mind him yeah, doing that again. Yeah, I think dogs buy over ten goals here. Ooh, I just hey. yeah, as I touched on, they've got too much firepower. Yeah. And we saw against the Suns last week. Every t- every time the Suns got a bit close, they were just like, nah, he's four goals. Yeah, and yeah, just, yeah. Just can pile on goals really quickly. So. Yep. 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon, Easter Sunday. You're just in your food coma. Yeah. A bit of roast in you, hanging out. I'll be sitting down the bush listening to this one on the radio, I reckon. Richmond versus Sydney. <laughs> should bush. be a crack. Yeah, go down the bush, hang out. No worries. Get a fire going. <laughs> a few tins. <laughs> uh, Richmond, they've lost eight of their last nine, which yeah. is pretty crazy. Yeah. I had they that, did I beat that Sydney down. last time. So yeah. interesting. Sydney, one and four at the MCG last year. Sydney, not great at G. Lost to the Blues in the elimination final. They did. Sort of gear. The Tigers, however, <laughs> aren't. Much chop. They were. No. They played really. I'm going to say that they, they played really well against Port. Every time Port looked like they're about to kick now, away, they when you, you've got a, you've got really in there. I feel yeah. like it's a loose really. They played good in. They patches. played okay. Like if they in played, the last I two think weeks. they've had a other than the Suns who they got smashed by. Those last two weeks were yeah were decent. They did do a lot wrong though, especially against yeah. Carlton. Yeah, they they, they need to fix their like wrong. turnovers and and guys just popping up like shy. Like Bolton. they look so slow on the outside. Yeah, like. They need to keep it so cont- – like, this needs to be raining for them. Like, it needs to be bucketing down. It's going to be a beautiful day on Sunday. Like, <laughs> well, no, I know, but I'm saying this That's is the their only chance way of winning. Chance. Is okay. it, they need to learn a few rain dances. So. The <laughs> ins and outs, uh, Nathan Broad, Maurice Rioli. Maurice. Maurice. <laughs> I like just reading the full name. Uh, <laughs> yes. Naismith, Tyler Young. Tyler's not just – Tyler's coming out the uh, wazoo. Spelled differently, though. Yeah. yeah different Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. Tyler, uh, <laughs> Justin Clark goes out, and who's that? Trezzy, 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 Trezzy. Never said that name. Never said that name. Trezzy, Trezzy, Trezzy. His probably nickname is Trezzy. Robbie Fox comes in for the Swans. Obviously, they lose Harry Cunningham, who got knocked out by uh, Peter Wright to mm. the point where he couldn't Seven remember seater. the game, couldn't remember the incident. Sad. Okay. That's not, not good. good. Mm. Sam Wicks goes out as well. They've got Francis. Interesting. Aaron Francis comes in. Yeah. I don't Adams, mind Aaron Francis. Kaylou Mitchell. Um, I feel like the Swans should run right over the top of them, but because it's at the G. Like, it just throws a spanner in the works, doesn't it? They're it's not like, horrible at the G or the Tigers. And Sydney, as you said, 1-4 last year. One of those losses was to the Tigers. So. Could the Tigers start 0-4? Yeah, yeah, I, I predicted them starting all four. I think we all, I, mean, I think we all did. So I think I'm going to go Sydney here as well. I'm going to go Sydney by three goals. I think it's a bit of a scrappy affair, and uh, the line is 21 and a half in favour of Sydney. Yep, Sydney, the road like favourite, is pretty chaos at the G, but they've looked awesome. So I'm happy to take that. I think. Leo? Yeah, I've gone very similar. Sydney by 19. It's going to be Richmond's inside game versus Sydney's kicking game. Mm. And I think Sydney on a, on a ground like the MCG, which is hard to defend. Is it bigger than the M- SCG? I'm not going to cover that. Uh, <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> definitely what that wider. sound you just heard was Alex just punching ah. a wall somewhere and just like losing his mind as soon as he heard that. It's like, what was that? Oh, Alex must have finally heard Jim go, wait, is the SCG smaller than the MCG? <laughs> anyway. 
Oh, I'll go as well. Uh, <laughs> if we want, <laughs> I, think I'm next. I think I'm next. Uh, is anyone else next? Swans by 26, I'm going. I think they're going to cover the line. I do think this will be pretty close in the first half and then Swans kick away uh, at the G. I think their game style should be good at the G. That didn't work last year, but they're playing a little bit differently, a little bit more attacking. So, yeah, Swans by 26. And then finally, Easter Monday. Yes, what an absolute <laughs> banner clash. We've got Leo's beloved Hawthorne Hawks. The walking wounded taking on Geelong, who are flying all of a sudden after last week as well. Looking really good too, Geelong. Yep. It's like the premiership hangover is sort of finally cleared. They're like, wait a minute. We're back. The Brock, <laughs> the Brock has kicked in. <laughs> Off we go. I've had a had a quick sneaky super and away we go. The line is 18 and a half, which feels very skinny for me because Geelong have looked pretty good and the Hawks, with all due respect, Leo. I have not. I take offence to that. <laughs> so talk us through it. Look, I think this game will be decided in the midfield. Yep. Hawthorne's midfield has been appalling to start the season. I've been furious. Some of your mids, young guys are actually really good as well. So like that, Newcomb, yeah. And, yeah. Newcomb and Nash are the two that really need to stand up for this game. Mm -hmm. Warple's actually been, been okay. He's been good, yeah. But we're coming up against the Cats midfield that doesn't have Dangerfield. They've got Tom Atkins, Tanner Bruin, you know, yeah, Clark, inex inexperienced. Very, yeah. very inexperienced. If we are not winning this midfield battle, we are going to lose by a lot. Yeah, mm. yeah. And Good also, call. Ned Reeves, get the hell out of my football. <laughs> he ready. is shocking. Get Lloyd Meek in. Ned Reeves, you are useless. That's not a good replacement, though, Lloyd Meek. It's not, but yeah. he'd offer something. Okay. That's, Tough fair. That's fair enough. That's Stats fair enough. guy, what are you feeling on this one? Uh, I chucked, yeah, chucked a few stats in there. Seven of the last nine Hawks versus Geelong games have been decided by 14 points or less. So uh, other than last, last year, year. They, I was going like, to say last year they demolish them. Yeah, so. well, I was uh, I was sitting with a Hawks and a Geelong fan. The Hawks fan was up and about getting into all the Geelong fans' faces. Half time, the Hawks were winning. Yeah, and then they somehow lost by eighty two. Well, we I are, can't talk as a North fan because we have done that multiple times. But eighty, Geelong, I think the Geelong were, kicked like eleven goals in a row or something. Yeah, ridiculous. we were actually playing really well, really well. Yeah. We should have been up by more at half time. Yeah, and then I don't think we had an inside fifty in the third quarter. Nah. like they just it was relentless. Jeremy I remember Cameron, watching that and just yeah. going, "What is going on?" Yeah, Jeremy came. I'm um, almost killed an ump. Yeah, so he kicked a lot of goals and then he, he bumped into an ump <laughs> and the umpire went absolutely flying. <laughs> Love it, uh, Massimo D'Ambrosio is you know he's the super coach darling so is. far. So. Uh, that's kind of fun. He's doing really, really well for the Hawks, though, because it feels like... Made a few errors last week, but yeah. Overall, He's still really good, yeah, though. Overall yeah. Pretty happy. yeah. Uh, I'm going to tip Geelong by 48. I think it's a bit of a Ooh. warping in the end. Uh, Leo? Cats by 38, yeah. I think they do enough to cover easily. Just so many forward options, right? Like, we can't defend all of them. No, you got... Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with that one. Cats by 30, just because of yeah, the forward line. When you got Hawkins is still flying, uh, he's probably one of the best... Guys, after the age of 30, I saw a big article about that. Uh, and then Jeremy Cameron's Did you read it? Big, a big article? <laughs> yeah. It was a long article. Yeah. I don't know why I said it like Didn't that. Read it. <laughs> that sounded weird. That sounded weird. Anyway, Cats by 30. It still blows my mind, though, that this is only an 18 and a half point line. I think I it's just because of the history. There's been a lot of close games on Easter Monday, other than last year. But nice. it should be a lot bigger than that, shouldn't it? It should. Big calls. Ooh. That's right. The Easter big calls. I say that Harry McFive wow. turns into zombie Jesus and comes alive again. Oh, that's not a Here bad call. Harry <laughs> McFive. Look, to be honest, he threatened it last year. Uh, <laughs> he did a kick four and then kicked one out on the floor. Now, your mate Jim might have had a Harry McFive bet. And uh, <laughs> Every he might week. have booted it. He might have booted it into the roof instead of just putting it through, which oh, is in the goal square. Yeah. Definitely yeah. broke my heart. I was and having a really bad day because obviously North were losing by a lot at that point. And then he kicked it out in the floor, and I my day was made. <laughs> the other one though for my big call is West Coast give the dogs a bit of a scare. Oh, I think, oh, so dude. we talked about so Hawthorne Geelong in a similar kind of way where the dogs might just be like, wait, how are we down like a quarter mm -hmm. time, and then just kick it into gear and smash them, but. Clip that I, up the socials. I think West Coast might be just, I don't know, a little bit more competitive in this one. They're okay. going to show us something, don't they? Nah. Stats guy? Uh, I'm going to go Bond against the West Coast to <laughs> the get West Coast. the West Coast, the <laughs> Eagles. <laughs> that sounded weird. <laughs> the, it, is the, it is the West Coast. Uh, 200 plus super coach. And no one's uh, got to 200 plus super coach this year yet. There was a couple last season. I think Bond's going to absolutely have an absolute field day. So, what are we stats? Uh, oh, he got 30. What did he have last week? 36 and a no, goal. No, I mean, so. like, for this game, predict it. All right, I'll go. Him, he's going to have 40 touches. 40 touches. Two goals. Two goals. 12 clearances. 12 clearances. And, and then take a few hangers. Yeah. I like <laughs> yeah. it. Nice. Yeah. Easy. 200 plus super coach in the bag. 
Sucked in, West Coast. Uh, <laughs> Leo. Uh, I'm going for Tom Papley to kick five against Richmond. Ooh, he kicked uh, six against them in Gather Round last year. I like that. And I just don't think there's an obvious matchup for him. Like, Richmond have a lot of attacking halfbacks and small defenders, so I think he'll uh, he'll be a bit sneaky and kick five. Interesting. Ooh, nice. Uh, he will be up and about after basically, I don't know, having a crack at all of Essendon. Which was yeah, he loves doing that type of stuff. <laughs> Keep an eye on. Who are we keeping an eye on this weekend? Uh, very easy for me. I think it's the Adelaide... Offense and defense. Like this could be. We've talked about so obviously Collingwood Brisbane being tonight. Mm -hmm. We've talked about both of those teams are over. Uh, you know, one of them could be the team just has the year from hell and it all falls apart. Adelaide could as well. Like they've looked weirdly wobbly at times, but then had like these amazing moments. I'm fascinated to see what happens tomorrow against Frio because that's such a weird matchup. They could be another team that could be like similar to what they were last, last year. It's year. like, oh, we're not bad, very yeah. good, and then yeah. it all clicks. Yeah. Or it could just fall apart right now and then just completely continues to fall yeah. apart because the holes that we've seen are glaring. They need to fix their forward entries. Yep. They've got a really good forward line, but they just spray it. Uh, Luke Pedler, my were, mate, was was spraying them everywhere. They, they were probably... kicking it to Tom Stewart. Yeah, yeah, yeah they were. Yeah, it's so like, He's got hoops on. It's like, we <laughs> wear hoops. It's like, they're different colors. <laughs> what are Very you doing? Different. Maybe they're, they're colorblind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your next keep an eye on? Oh, I chuck this one in there for your beloved uh, Blues. If I just want to see if Carlton are good enough to put away a lower side. Put away a team with a strong margin because... The Blues, every time they come against some lower teams, they never win by more than 25 or, or 30, just yeah. say. Well, we they did in the back half of last year, but back it was up, like, yeah, um, yeah, we were flying at Sort that of, just though. to prove to the competition that they're right up there. They should be smashing north, really. They should. So I just want to see. I hope they don't, but I just want to see if that is uh, going to happen. Leo? I'm looking at how the Ds go without Stephen May because mm. if they struggle big time without him and he's out for a few weeks, then that's not going to be a good period for him. No. Good I call. do like that they're like, oh, I'll give you back like in two weeks. I'm like, you've got broken ribs. Yeah, yeah, what <laughs> to be fair, homie was working the next day after. Yeah, the in the in the room, office. So yeah, yeah. That's because you're out there cracking the whip. <laughs> <laughs> Super coach tips, vibes, thoughts. Before we get into round three, uh, we've got a massive array of the Super Coach podcast. You can yes. hear Stats Guy and I actually on the official Super Coach podcast from earlier this week. Uh, have you changed your trades, Stats Guy? Because I definitely have. I switched out uh, sort of, yeah. Harris Andrews into uh, Harris Mazzai Andrews. Wengenin. He had yeah. Harris Andrews, yeah. It was a bit of a pod there. Yeah. He, he was, was out there. He'd <laughs> racked, he he racked up right. plenty of points already. He was like, you know, he's going to boost up in, uh, in terms of the dollars if he has a good night tonight. But I ended up pulling the pin on that and going to uh, Mazai Wanganin Miller. So... Who has just been? His role has been fantastic. He's awesome. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, I thought about it just a little bit more. I've still got the vi the VC on Nick Dacos. Don't don't screw me over here, Nick. Uh, <laughs> or I might have to have a week or two off with a busted hammy. I don't know. Um, outside of that, though, my captaincy options and stuff like that mm. are really up in the air. I think you like, got a lot of good options though this week. Yeah, Heaney, Petrarca, yeah, uh, Bont, Bont. He's gonna get two hundred. So yeah, yeah. 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 Rosie, even against Melbourne, would be interesting because I feel like Butters and Rosie are just going to trade being awesome. Yeah, just year. you can be awesome this week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are the other sort of moves that you're looking at, Stats Guy? Uh, I brought in Tom Power. I, I can't believe I'm Your saying Your beloved Tom My Powell. beloved Tom yes. Power. He's got four. I've got four North players in my team now, which just feels That's wrong. Good. Feels wrong, but they're getting really good super coach scores. And then Massimo is the other one. You, uh, over Tom Power, over everyone, I'd bring in Massimo. He's only 224,000. Leo's mate from the Hawks. Uh, no, mate, his yeah. break even yeah. is the highest I think of anyone at the moment, which is well, minus eighty two. Yeah, so the lowest. Sorry, the lowest. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the lowest. That's how numbers work. Stats <laughs> I'm always so bad with numbers, aren't I? Minus what? 82. You're, you're the stats guy. <laughs> I know, I know. I didn't give that to myself. I didn't give him a You're just like Draymond myself. Green. You should be arrested. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, don't compare me to Draymond this. Green. He's filth. Uh, minus 82. For uh, fraud. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's what I reckon. Ma bring in Massimo. Uh, Massimo's the obvious one. I did that as well. So I've boosted. And um, yeah, I brought in Jack Carroll, Massimo, and... Jack Miller, Carroll's really so. good too. Yep. What about you, Leo? Yeah, boosting as well. I've got to get rid of Hayden Young. He's been a let down to start the season. Everybody's gotten rid of Hayden Young. Yeah. Yep. Also, I'm getting rid of Sam Berry and Jared Lyons, who I had to start, but they're both omitted. Yeah. Lyons stiff, I think, yeah. Bringing in sh the Sheasel. Oh, nice, the Sheasel. Uh, bringing in Tom Powell and Ollie Dempsey. Nice. I Dempsey <laughs> is an interesting one because, like, the Cats play your beloved Hawks. Yep. It does feel like he could run rampant again on the G. Yeah, he could. But he three. was, like, so, yeah, depending on the goal kicking, mm. he's, like, massive scoring round. One. One. His break evens, yeah, really, really yeah. low. He'll be fine. He'll be awesome. Yeah. Also, just another classic. What are you, a carpenter or a surfer? Both. <laughs> like, yeah, Geelong. He looks like Checks a surfer. <laughs> God damn. But either way, the rest of the Supercoach stuff, I mean, this is massive, massive, massive week for the bubble. Yes. Uh, you got heaps and heaps and heaps of uh, players sort of sitting there. 
ups and downs in terms of your uh, break evens and stuff. So I don't know Jack Harrell's like one of those clear ones for me because he's yep. best mates with Paddy Cripps. I'm like, he's not going to leave this team anytime soon. He's actually lost. not playing. He just follows Cripps everywhere. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's just Lots of options. Option. Get stuck in. <laughs> you can listen to all the Super Coach podcasts. But that's it. I think that's how it's done for the week for yep. AFL today. We've got five days of footy ahead. Yes. Cannot wait to get stuck in. Are we just a rolling mass of... Chocolate, hot cross buns, and booze. Should be good, though. Uh, thank you to Leo. Thank you to Jim. And to <laughs> – don't make it weird, Leo. Uh, <laughs> Stop in you. Thank you to Stats Guy. <laughs> thank you to both of you. And go north. <laughs> good job. Uh, remember to smash a like for the AFL Today Show across all the socials. You can see us doing a bunch of stuff here. And then at Gather Round yes. next week. Nice. We'll be wandering around causing all sorts of havoc all around Adelaide. That'll be fun. And, you know. Norwood, stuff like that. Yeah, Mount Barker. Yeah, Hanging everywhere. out. And subscribe and start to all of our shows, of course, the Cricket Today podcast, where you can see these two dingoi, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, all the other good stuff. Uh, hold all tickets. Why not? Uh, and, yeah, smash them all on the socials as well. Get around all of them like Tony Plugger Lockett on the sixth dog in the fifth race. <laughs> tell you that much. be pretty good. <laughs> all right, but that's it. Have a great Easter. We will catch you for the next AFL Today rap show, which will be on Monday night because we've got footy on Monday. Because guess what? Look after yourselves, enjoy your Easter, and footy's back. Yeah.